Where does the mind end and the rest of the world begin? If we start from materialism, most people will probably answer that the mind ends where the brain ends, or at least where the body ends. Philosophers Andy Clark and David Chalmers, however, believe that if certain requirements are met, things that fall outside of the realm of the body, such as information in a smartphone, should be counted as part of the mind. The mind can therefore be extended with these things. If you have never wondered about this before, and you immediately have the gut feeling that this is a strange idea, then it is interesting to consider why you have that gut feeling and what could possibly be wrong with this idea of the extended mind. To be able to judge what is potentially wrong with it, you first have to know what the criteria are under which we can count something outside the body as part of the mind. And maybe you will come to the conclusion that the idea is not so strange at all. The first and most important of these requirements is the parity principle. We would consider some external processes part of our mind if they took place in the head. If you tell me your phone number and I remember that, we say I remember what your phone number is. Your telephone number is therefore in my mind. But what if I save it to my smartphone? According to Clark and Chalmers, we can also accept that this information belongs to the mind because it complies with the parity principle, among other things. This parity principle, however, is too weak because it extends the mind in such a way that we would have to include so much that almost the entire world becomes part of the mind. If I had an old encyclopedia in my shed, then everything in it could be considered part of my mind. Because if I had all the information from that encyclopedia in my head, it would be part of my mind according to the parity principle. But I don't have that information with me, unlike the information that is actually in my head. Therefore, a number of other criteria are needed and must also be met. That which we expand the mind with must also be used normally, be considered trustworthy, and easily accessible. We can easily see that the telephone number in my cell phone meets these requirements. Normally, if you call someone you know these days, then you will do that using a smartphone in which the number is stored. Nowadays, everyone takes their phone with them everywhere, and there is reception everywhere. The second criterion, therefore, is also met. If I wanted to call you, my phone would be available and I would also be sure that I have the correct phone number. The phone is not mistaken. I therefore assume that the number is correct. The third requirement is therefore met as well. And lastly, a mobile phone is easy to use, which means that the last criterion has also been met and we must therefore conclude that for the people who always have their smartphones with them, the phone numbers in them belong to their extended mind. But where does this expansion of the mind end? Nowadays, you can use the internet everywhere with most smartphones. Now, imagine that you want to go to the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam and that you have never been there. Then you use Google Maps to see where the museum is. It appears that the address is Museumstraat 1. Can we now say that you knew this? It does meet the requirements of the extended mind. If you had this information in your head, we would say that you did indeed know where the Rijksmuseum was. So the parity principle was met. Google Maps is what we usually use when we want to look up an address and we also consider the information that Google Maps provides us with as reliable or trustworthy. The requirements 2 and 3 are therefore also met. Moreover, Google Maps is very user-friendly so that we can conclude that the last criterion has been met as well and that we should therefore consider Google Maps to be part of our extended minds. But if Google Maps belongs to your extended mind, then you also know the address of the Center for Fine Arts in Brussels and that of the Museum of Modern Art in New York. You may find that this is going too far. But if you think this is going too far, can you explain why Google Maps should not be part of the extended mind? Where is the mistake in the criteria or argumentation?